She came on the go-go music scene bright-eyed, with a pen in her hand, a love for the culture in her heart, and a mission on her plate. And during that time, she has helped create blueprints of platforms and images that many today, without even realizing it, still embed into their own platforms. Author, writer, broadcaster, actress, community advocate, and now having earned her BA in psychology and an MA and PhD in human services psychology, please welcome Dr. Tahira Mudi. Welcome to another session of the one-on-one. I'm your host, Kato Hammond, and this is where we get it done. My guest today, we're going to start off right on the good foot, and this is a person who definitely is not new to the T My Gogo Media platform, although she is here this morning, and we're going to wrap her brain up a little bit because mm-hmm. she's under a brand new title. So I'd like mm-hmm. to welcome you this morning to our special guest and also family member of the one-on-one, Dr. Tahira <laughs> Chloe Mott. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Dang, that PhD. good. I had Kato say it. Thank you. All right. What's up, Doc? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing good. Like I'm, on this side of it, being able to sit with you and complain about the PhD process and now to be on this side, you say, you, Doc, you I'm know good. What? You know, I got, I got to start <laughs> off by saying, the doctor here, Dr. T. <laughs> what can we call you? Call me T. 99. Okay, T. Okay, right, okay. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I was saying? still 99. We say. You know. I mean, she said, okay, that's what I'm saying. She came on board on T. Mark Gogo right around 1998, was it? 98, yeah. It was, you know, pretty young and, mm-hmm. and um, with all kind of aspirations and dreams. And I used to call her young Renee Poussaint. You remember all that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and... You know, we we created the the very first. We we came up with the con- original concept of putting the Go Go Radio platform online and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So we and so much over the years, you know, that we've worked together. I think this is the first time, and we did the WTGO stuff, mm-hmm. the Cato and the uh, T Mot Crew Morning Show stuff, the ninety nine and Cato stuff, T Mot TV, the T Mot TV stuff, mm-hmm. the it. The It the Factory. It factory yeah. I mean, so much, so much <laughs> platforms we created. Mm-hmm. So as you can see, I'm definitely psyched this morning because in all honesty, this is the first time ever that we set a platform where I'm interviewing you. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. I right. interviewed you before, though. Yeah, you've uh-huh. interviewed me before when we was right. create when we were creating the second time the T-Mot, T-Mot Radio. Oh, radio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm really psyched about that. But... Um, and, and this is new. This is something she's been working on, and we all been, you know, praying for and and just watching mm-hmm. her take what it needs to do to hit this, hit this plight that you hit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, how you feel about it? First of all, I feel really proud. Um, it it, it was six and a half years it took me to do that, yeah, and I had it to get a, like forever. <laughs> yeah. Um, had to get a master's along the way too. Uh, just feeling really good, and this is my first stop. So with my results of my research, making sure that I disseminate the results to the community first. So this is my first stop in okay. letting the world know uh, what was up. Okay. So and that's the whole point we brought you here. One of the one of the reasons to say congratulations to you Thank officially you. publicly. <laughs> um, the other thing is really something really interesting is uh, your dissertation mm-hmm. that you did that took you all this long to finish complete that got you you know this phd that you have received now was actually done on what what was Uh, the subject of your dissertation (laughs) well the subject was membership but the case study was the go-go community go-go community Mm -hmm. so something that basically your heart's been in 
Yeah. Um, and and that's what I, th- I find interesting because I kind of wanted to go into detail. Me myself, who never been a candidate of a PhD, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people have, <laughs> of course, but never knew the, you know the, I guess the details or how much it take. And going into this um, dissertation. So I kind of wanted to, I guess, you explain that to us a little bit. You know, being on, no, being in it too and on the other side, just basically imagine you as a person intellectually completing circus acts. You know, you got to walk a tight rope, you jump Uh through fiery hoops, and then people give you some paper. But I mean, I'm simplifying it because this is not an easy process at all. Right. But um, it's more like you you pick a topic, a field of study. Mine was community psychology. Community, you said community, community psychology, psychology okay. as opposed to clinical. So okay. clinical, you work one on one. I help entire communities uh, find resources or um, collaborate with other institutions or organizations. OK. Um, but studying that, you know, picking a topic as far as something that was already being done and something widely accepted in the community psychology field, which was a construct called sense of community, Mm -hmm. took the construct of membership out of that and wanted to just examine that by itself and with the go-go community. Okay, so the go-go community is a community you chose. Right. And now, I guess you say before was to determine membership, It's a community? Well, membership is this thing that has been defined in community psychology psychology literature Mm -hmm. and it basically says that there are those who belong to a community and those who do not belong and then those who belong have invested themselves and feel like they have the right to belong okay so for me reading that having my background also um being involved like many of us are in a whole lot of different communities just saying does that apply to this community this community that community I, in thinking about the go-go community, it's like, you know what, let's test it and okay. see how well um, the people, my participants from the go-go community, how well their responses would fit into this five attribute structure that was already defined. Okay. Um, and the bottom line was it did not. And there was a whole different other structure or framework that I came up with called being of the community. So mm-hmm. instead of membership, um, you know, the, my participants from the go-go community pretty much disputed that. So they would say, I'm a member of the community, but just that word membership itself, they kind of pushed back against that, saying it's, and they knew that it was an exclusive or an exclusionary concept. Like they would say, membership, that's not really what what it is. It's not like people can't be in it. Right. So that was a very important construct because the whole- That's interesting. So basically, I guess in a nutshell, Go the the people in the Google community, because you interviewed people, correct? Mm -hmm. You interviewed the people- Basically, we're saying we are open arms. Right. They're saying we are open arms. Um, they were saying that anybody can be in the community. There's no, you know, gatekeeping that say these people can be in and be out. Mm-hmm. But that thing about boundaries, saying who can be in and who can be out, boundaries, they were saying, were created from the outside. So that means that people were used to um, trying to explo- expose other people to go-go. Like, hey, listen to this, or come to the show with me. And people say, no, I don't like go-go. So that's one way that right. people on the outside created a boundary. Or politicians, they describe if they were creating laws or policies that hindered the scene. Mm-hmm. You know, that's creating a boundary from the outside. Or people who were um, exploiting the community. Um, media or anybody else who may have come and done research or something where it was like, they were kind of creating the boundary themselves. So it's not the people inside saying so, who can't so, be in so, it. So basically, so you talk with people within and outside the community. Within, but not necessarily outside. I talked to people who, what I came up with in the end was a three-level structure of community. Okay. So the literature says, if you're in a community, you're in, other people are out. And okay. you're trying to keep them out. So I was saying that's not necessarily the case. My participants said that's not necessarily the case, especially with the go-go community. They're not trying to keep people out. Mm-hmm. So there is an extra level in the middle who's like supportive community. So you might, you know, some people explain, well, I never went to the Howard Theater back in the day, or mm-hmm. I just started coming to Go Go's in 2000 or whenever it was. Right. So they find themselves in it, but they respectfully step back from people who've been in it since the beginning. People okay. like you. Right. Um, and they would name people. I'm not like so and so, but you know, right. I do this and I do that and call themselves supportive. So that is another um, level around community. Okay. Okay, so the so and, and as we talked about before, so the that's the supportive 
The mm-hmm. potential. Can you break that down? The potential. Community. Yeah. So if the three levels are core members, put uh, support. Core members is like core members is in the middle. Like it's people like you, themselves. musicians, definitely. Um, uh-huh. People who grew up in a lot of my participants said. Uh, when I was little, my older brother or sister played it. Um, okay. My father took me to a go-go. They just don't remember life without go-go. Okay. So that that's a core member. And we even know those people by the way they talk sometimes. You okay. can tell by the slang people use oh, okay. and certain yeah. things like that. Okay, this is a go-go person. Right. Um, but the supportive people may say, I love go-go music. Or I go to go-go's when I can or if it's whatever. But they, they're not in the middle of that. Okay. So, That's yeah. two. And so the potential. Is the potential are the people who don't know what go-go music is. So they can potentially become members. And potentially, if they start going and start supporting, right. um, get knowledge about the community, they can do that. Okay. Um, so in conclusion, I mean, in conclusion of this, basically, mm-hmm. would you, because I mean, I got a little information right here, whatever. Mm-hmm. In conclusion of this, what did you walk away with? Oh, man. <laughs> what did you walk away with the conclusion of the whole thing? That, that I guess, when presenting the dissertation to them, right? Because mm-hmm. they, they study the research that you did. Right. You mean the people in my field? Yeah. Um. Basically, what I thought the whole time, and I can use this opportunity to tell people, encourage your children or anybody else you know to get a PhD in psychology or other fields, because what I'm what I went through during that process was reading research that made generalizations about black people, about poor people, Mm -hmm. um, other communities that they knew nothing about. And making generalizations about stuff that's not true. And this is just one example. Right. You know, people are membership. You belong. You don't. That wasn't true for us. Right. So um, that's what I came away with was that. But I can't just go in there and say this is culturally a white American way of looking at things. I have to do research to show that or to provide evidence that that way of thinking just in a lot of other research on top of it is right. just probably not relevant for marginalized people, oppressed people, black people, you know, in, in certain communities. Okay. Is this information, um, so dissertation is usually about as thick as a book, correct? Yeah, it's supposed to be a book. I think mine ended up, I think I'm at 160 pages. Okay. Something like that. On the average size book. Yeah. Okay. Um, is that a, so does that go on a market or how does, uh, I mean, not, in other words, is it available for people to pull yeah. up and research or do they, how, how does that work? Um, I, and I'm reading a message because I think I've heard situations where I may have seen a book that was published, right? but it started as a dissertation. Right. Um, I could do that. What I would do in that situation is take a lot of them, try to make it so, um, anybody could read it and understand it, but it will be available online. So it's been submitted to the electronic thesis and dissertation site. To and win the electronic thesis mm-hmm. and dissertation. Okay. So it's a lot. Of, um, anybody's uh, thesis or dissertation, you can Google and look up, right. which should be from this uh-huh, international okay. database. Uh-huh. So that's been submitted, and eventually I'll get an email saying, "You good?" And that's it. What about libraries? No. And that's the thing. It may need to be a book. I have had people say, you're going to make this into a book. So I may have to do that, but mm-hmm. I want to start getting this out. Because mm-hmm. there's so much that, and I, and we know this for sure. This, mm-hmm. this is why we're, we have always been about archiving right. historical information, right. the importance of it. Mm-hmm. And this right here looks like it would be so, you, you have so many people who reach out to, to T-Mod or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, platforms for researchable information. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's why I ask about libraries mm-hmm. because, um, yeah, I mean, this kind of information, I think is really... Oh, yeah. It could go if I make it into a book format, but if those same people are scholars, they should be able to look up this work incited in their own work okay. at the same time it's my responsibility to reach out i'll probably reach out to high schools community groups anything else to make presentations about it and answer mm. questions about it because the priority is disseminating this information to the community first to the go-go community first right. and to other communities that might find themselves in common where you have people coming to study you but they're study you using a framework that's based on something that doesn't even pertain to you in your culture right 
Okay. All right. And, and I'm thinking, as you tell me, I'm thinking, because I'm thinking about the the archive that um, Martin Luther King Library has been building up mm. strictly for mm -hmm. local mm -hmm. and probably contacting them to mm -hmm. submit as well. Mm -hmm. Hey. You know <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? Look, anybody got ideas? You know, we open yeah, for all I that mean, because it, it is some folks I know up in that camp. Okay. Um I just I mean, and I'm looking forward to reading it myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got a brief thing from you, but I mm -hmm. I know it's gonna take some time to sit back and read. It might. Um I I'm a creative writer. Um right. I've written for TMOT. Right. I have a, my writing style has not changed too much. You have to make it a little bit academic or they'll say you're not a scholar or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, being black and being me and being in that space and having to go, why do I have to explain it this way when I could just say it like this, right. you know? So a lot of this stuff, that. basically knowing you is basically stuff you've been saying all these years yourself anyway. Exactly. You're just, <laughs> you're just bringing up results from researchers to define it. Or, yeah, you know, like me sitting in class arguing with a, a person who's ignorant right. is, is not the same as you know me saying, why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? The PhD means, all right, I've, I've seen your scientific method. Right. I'm going to write down what you, all right, now I'm going to lay it out the way that you say, Knowledge isn't, you know, real to academics unless you've studied it and it's this and it's that and it's in this journal, uh -huh. which has been dumb the whole time. But I can't just say this is dumb. And that's part of the reason it took me six and a half years is fighting against like a racist system or mm -hmm. just things that, that just don't really make a whole lot of sense. And it seems like things or barriers that are built to um, marginalize people or stereotype people. But I can't just come out and say that in order to say it to the institutions and to the academic community, mm -hmm. I have to take their process and show it to them in, in their language. Let me ask you, in the six years you've been working on this, right? No, this hasn't oh, been six okay. years. This has been but like... this has been like what? Two? I'm going to say like two and a half years. Right. Yeah, Within before that, that time, was a master's degree. <laughs> or just, or just and, and then your train of thought period, or your thought even mm -hmm. before going into action with this, mm -hmm. um, have anything changed with the... Basically, the layout of the demographic changing, mm -hmm. has that kind of played an effect in this, do you think? You mean demographic of the area? The or? area. Let's say like the gentrification situation. Mm -hmm. um, um, or did that play, that have anything to... People brought that up. That's uh -huh. the thing. People would bring it up in conversation and say, well, now, that was a lot of times their answer in response to the question, what does race have to do with membership in the go-go community? Right. So a lot of times they say, oh, nothing. And then they might go on to explain that, um, well, now you see white people at the go-go's or, but even though we always did, I guess yeah. they would say more or a different type of, it's not the white people that grew up with us that were just, we just, you know. Right. With right. our crew or whatever. So some that's coming from the potential community. Right. So th that's what people would say. Some musicians said that. Some people who attend Go-Go say that. Like, you, you see more white people. And that's pretty much it. But right. they didn't say... Um, as, uh, I don't know. It, it comes into play. And that's the one thing... Another thing I found about the Go-Go community is you can't separate it from its connection to the entertainment industry, which is another reason why there's a supportive community and a potential... Because if you're trying to make money, it's a business, you right. know, why would you shut people out and say you can't be a part of our community? Okay. So. Okay. I'm going to ask, and then a little bit, and this may have nothing to do with this, but I'm <laughs> asking, this is just something, that, a statement that I read and, and it hit a light bulb for a lot of people with someone, say, and I'm saying this because of what you just said. So, uh, well, I read somewhere where someone said, Go-Go really isn't in, abuse, in the business of music. It's in the business of partying. Hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Hmm. I don't know. As you know what, as somebody who can, I don't even know which part I'm in, support of a core. Um, I'm not a musician. I know I like the party. You hear me call yeah. myself a rump shaker, so right. well, you no, put on the core, beat, I'm there. I would say because of the work you've done within it, your core. Okay. So, yeah, so that's like a qualification. Like somebody like you who's right. unquestionably core, that was another finding that came up. If somebody who's in the core tells you you're one of us, that's, oh, you know, wow. something okay. that tells you something about the community. But oh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, 
I like that it, if you say it's in the business of party and a lot of people use that term party, come right. to party with us or whatever. Um, a lot of my participants spoke to an imaginary other that they imagined listening to this tape. Like they say, hey, I mean, if you want to come party with us, come on party. It was, it was interesting how people did that. It was a lot of inviting to this imaginary person okay. To, okay. to come out and party. So I'm like, if that's what it is, people pay a lot of money for the business of partying, uh -huh. apparently. And, it's funny, can't, and everybody can't party with us. Everybody can't party like us. Every, well, you say everybody can't party like us. You say they can't party with us. But you said they can't. Well, you know how some people, well, some, some participants and even some people would say that's part of inviting people into the community. Uh -huh. If you go to a go-go and you go, oh, it's too much jumping around. Uh -huh. Okay, well, maybe that's not the place for you. And other people, when I say can't party like us, one of the common symbols, one of the attributes of being of the community, just like membership, is a common symbol system. Uh -huh. So one of the symbols is dancing. So if you've ever been at a go-go and somebody looks like they've never been there before, mm -hmm. they look like they've never <laughs> danced to this music before, yeah, but some people look like, you know, just the way they groove, you just know. Right? Well, some, yeah, those <laughs> other people don't look like, a lot of times we assume they were the police or something, right? <laughs> Yeah, so I, I've heard that. That came up in the research, too. Right. But, yeah. So now, did, I'm going to say, did, did, did you find any scent of fear of cultural appropriation? A little bit. Um, only from, really, a lot of people who were considered themselves supportive community. Or okay. who may have been core. But that's the other thing with the core and the supportive. There are people who, especially people like me who have a a definite origin story of like living in Baltimore, coming to Oxon Hill, hearing go, go on a school bus, having to find out what it was. Then go, you know what I'm saying? They right. have a very distinct, uh, specified story about coming into the community. Right. Those were the people who are more likely to talk about, um, appropriation and not wanting it to, um, yeah, be gentrified or appropriated. Right. But it didn't kind of come up a whole bunch because I kept my question specific to, the phrase membership in the go-go community and member of the go-go community. Okay. All right. The, the, the people who were members, well, no, I don't really, <laughs> people who were found out the member were proud to be members, correct? I, I would say so. Yeah, I would say so. Okay. A, a couple of people, one of the phrases that came up was I am go-go. And I thought that was very, um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, even somebody else who, I would probably think the person was core, but they were saying they were supportive, but they were just, they called themselves like on the cusp, but okay. they said, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not go-go, you know, like some people, they go-go, but I'm not that I'm blah, blah, blah. So that is a distinction that some people made, which I thought was really cool. Um, okay. but yeah, uh, people were very proud to be. That's pretty cool. That's, mm -hmm. that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. So where do you go from here, doctor? Oh my goodness! Well, <laughs> oh, I mean, because you've done so much. Once again, I got to bring out, and this was back when you were like twenty. So I got to bring out one of the first books that she wrote. If you haven't gotten it, you can get it. You can go to her website. It's called God Laughs Too, um, and I got it up on the screen as we talk. Um, this was your first one. That's the first right? one. Right? Yeah. So, and the other one was How to Be Queen of the Universe, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's her second book. Right. So, you've done so much in this dash of yours. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that, that uh, I mean, you, you always know, we always, we just super psyched about it. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate it. <laughs> that, 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 that we kind of knew what was going to happen anyway. You always said that. Every time I did something, you knew what was going to happen anyway. So I'm like, all right. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so that's that's really cool. So you know, what's next? What's next on the? Yeah, I know a little the, bit because uh -huh. now the emails that come in are like uh, it's co consulting work. Okay. Um. So people who are doing projects, people who are working with communities. It's, it's I would say all all with community. Yeah, all okay. with community. So I've been doing that um for the last six years. Like my resume or curriculum vita, as they call it, um, is filled with. Community this, community that, this organization, work with community uh, groups in grad school, all that kind of stuff. So uh -huh. just same thing, but hopefully getting paid more for it. That's about, yeah. Uh -huh. It's like letters. You can be like, yeah, you know, that's going to be <laughs> <laughs> at a zero or two and okay. <laughs> try to get some money. <laughs> and you said they're coming in. What, the call, the email? Yeah, yeah, yeah I got uh, a couple of things all happening right. just I, and I, oh, I guess the next thing I have to do is start a, 
a, a business, you know, like a sole proprietorship, I yeah. guess, to regulate that uh, consulting work. That's pretty much, but also movie writing. So you right, that's it. what I'm saying. The yeah. whole time you get it, because you, you, you always, no matter what you've done, you've always leaned toward the writing in the arts mm -hmm. field. Right. Period. Mm -hmm. So we still in that debt? Still in that, um, you know, last year I did, I had two acting, yeah, major yeah. acting yeah. gigs. <laughs> <laughs> there's an episode, Matt, there's an episode, if you haven't seen it, on TV One's, um, which Thou Shalt Not. Thou Shalt Not. One season of, of that show, Thou Shalt Not. Um, There's a couple of people from my area that, that you would recognize who were speaking, you know, about crimes that happen on a true crime show. Right. But you on one, you pay a, you know, like a Corella I mean, you know, you play a vicious. <laughs> what was the title of that episode? I'm about oh, to look man. that up and pull it up so y'all can yeah. make him, if they make him find it, I, I, I DVR'd it. Okay. So they make yeah, it so did my it on mom. or something like that. <laughs> they can. I have to give you the link and you can put it on your page or something. Right. <laughs> but I mean, I, it, yeah, 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 definitely. So mm -hmm. what is online? It can be found online? Oh, yeah. Oh, That's really? how I sent it to a lot of people, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, do that. Okay. We're going we to connect it on here. And, um, <laughs> and then, so is that. It's that the, and App Love. App Love. App Love is, is the web series. All right. So. Both, we don't want you to get typecast, okay? That's, I know. You know what I'm saying? Well, this, this is helping out. It's like, oh, no, she's a scholar. App Love, I saw that one. That's a web episode in that. I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah, mom still ain't seen that one yet. She, she was like, what about that web series? I was like, oh, you want a sandwich? Like, just anything to change the subject. She'll, she'll find it eventually. <laughs> I had to wait till I got this PhD so she could be, I'd be like, look, I'm, I'm a doctor in that. You can't. Because <laughs> she's going to be like, what? Okay, so and you did some video appearances as well. Oh yeah, the, yeah, um, videos. Uh, the uh, the, uh, the, the bag of bees, Black, John. The, oh yeah, um, DC Symphony Three. DC Symphony Three with mm -hmm. all the with with Karis from Bella Donna, and um, Katie also Adia, Adia. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Mercedes, Mercedes, mm -hmm. and and um, KC from Black Alley. Mm -hmm. So and y'all all looking very. Good on that, John. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. She okay. did my makeup. Okay, <laughs> and then the black girls. No, what was it? Uh, black Love Superstar. Black Love Superstar mm -hmm. video. That was the Head Rock, John. The Head mm -hmm. Rock, John, which I thought was very artistically done. Very, the video yeah. Itself. That came out really well. Um, and are we missing anything? Yeah, just one, but that's fine. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I don't <laughs> know. I'll send it to you. Okay. <laughs> all right. so, you know how it was an artist you work with, and you'd be like, hmm, all right. <laughs> uh, okay. Don't forget, I want to see this. But you're saying you're writing now, writing script. Writing, yeah. Script writing. Uh, we got a great idea for a movie. It's like halfway there. Mm -hmm. But every time I want to work on that, I'm thinking, as soon as I finish this dissertation, it's going to be right to the movies. But no, now I'm writing. Um, Things that's like kind of translations of that whole document, the dissertation document, to right. distribute to people. Right. So that, yeah. that does take take some time, and then trying to find other because I have other scholars um, contacting me for like applications of this framework that I came up with to mm -hmm. apply to their work. So that's is is really exciting because I didn't know it would come out that way, and people would see value in it. In in that where I came up, of course. I mean, I'm thinking like, of course, like this is great, but. After the whole journey of it, and you know, when you reach that PhD finish line, it's like bloodied and bruised and crawling toward it. So, um, almost kind of like glad for it to be over. But then when people circle back around and go, "Hey, that work you did, this can apply to this," I'm like, "Oh, all right." So now it's back on that um, grind again. Okay, okay, that's cool. But we're not gonna give up on that script. Nah, no, nah, I have to do that. Because <laughs> the story, you know how the story has to get out and yeah. the story is just begging to be told. I was like, all right, it's coming. Uh, but I'm right. I'm not writing it alone. So I'm writing with uh, Christopher Brown. So, OK, Chris. Yeah. yeah OK, mm -hmm. OK, OK. Tell Chris, I say, hey, shout I going out to Chris. <laughs> and um, let's see. What, what else? OK, I need to ask a couple of questions. Sure. Who, who's your favorite Google bear? Of mm. all time, I ain't gonna, well, I'm, I'm gonna say of all time. Ah, oh, Lord. Um, I already, I think I know. I think I know. Go ahead and guess. Junkyard. All right. 
Yeah. Was I right? Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I think I was at that right age uh-huh. to be a, a junkyard person. Then when Rashid did the um, the MTV thing, you know, right. hooked up with Mo and followed Junkyard for a while. So I think that's how I really got into it, seeing Junkyard do shows for weeks on end. Mm. Yeah. Now, she just hit on something, and because you hit on we got to bring that up. Of course. Okay. <laughs> of how we first met. Mm-hmm. Okay, and the way we first met, mm-hmm. you were how old? Mm, was I already 19? About 19? 19, maybe. About 19. Or 20. I okay. could have just turned 20. And basically, you want to tell the story? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I was 19 because I'm thinking of it. That was probably fall of 97, maybe? Yeah. Something yeah, like right that. that uh, I was fresh out of broadcasting school. Uh, getting a job at WPGC. Yeah, because you was working at PGC at the time. Yeah, well, by the time we met in person. But right. by the time we talked on the phone, uh-huh. I, I hadn't gotten that job yet. Okay. Uh, but yeah, my brother was doing a thing for MTV, and we have the footage for that. Like, that's on the DC Brand 99 site. Um, doing a documentary for their show, True Life Unfiltered. Yeah, he MTV. hit you up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hit you up because you had T-Mot Go-Go online or whatever it was at that time. Yeah. In 96, yeah. 97. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, when you called the house for my brother, I asked you for a job. And you gave me one. <laughs> <laughs> so basically started when we were working with her brother and um, with the MTV. Well, he was doing a project and we was just helping him connect to people in Go-Go. Right. To get the footages he need for MTV. Mm-hmm. Which was junky, mainly junky. I was a few it's bands, but main, junky. Yeah. Back then, bands was a little reluctant. They were, but most shorter was. But that's most why shorter, I, always, like, always. Yeah. You know, and that's why junk, the footage was of a junky out on mm-hmm. MTV. Mm-hmm. And um, so from there, that's where we uh, met and been working with each other ever since. That's yeah. That's been over twenty years. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So. Really Most proud. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> really proud and stuff. And uh I can say it's a few of you guys I'm really proud of. I mean in all honesty, I think Tyra Tyra's another one. Tyra Berg is on her way. She's been doing really great education wise. And the art. Her and the art. Like everybody yeah. who came out and of her art, yeah. yeah. Her paintings. And People stuff. coming out of T My is is so interesting and I'm I'm glad that I got the chance to study community like making that a field of study and a field of scholarship it just means so much now where i can just do this comparison and for some reason i kept always comparing whatever they said about community to the go-go community and Uh, it was it was just weird like the being on one side of it where i'm in a position to extract from a community and make it into whatever i wanted to because that's what you can do in academics or whatever but being a part of a community that that was being done too and people were talking about it and feeling it so um yeah but having tmot as as my background a professional background helped me a whole lot in being able to explain things to people and explain why community media is important why it's important community for and we know some people probably just realizing that Mm-hmm. Because of Facebook, but we've been knowing that. Oh yeah, and experiencing that. Mm-hmm. That's really because you're right about that. So many, so many people who who were working with us back then that's doing so many great things now. Man. Mm-hmm. You know, you're right about that. Yeah. Telling our own stories is, yeah. is actually very important. So supporting um, independent publications, like I hope to talk to a whole lot more people are asking me about putting it out in um, mainstream media outlets. But I'm very much interested in talking to community-based media people right. because they need stories and you need, um, as far as how I would like to use uh, my work is saying for you to already have a, not saying already have a plan, but uh-huh. already to know a little bit of something about how other people come into our communities and study us. Right. Um, you know, one of the things I rallied against was, you know, a scholar saying that there's no such thing as a we. And I'm like... That ain't necessarily true. Really? Like, yeah. Well, they're saying that in terms of because there's so much social inequality and people like just pick things and put it together. It sounds right. good. But when you take that apart, it's like, of course, there's a we. If we say we are we. We know who we are. Right. So but a scholar says there's no such thing. And if a bunch of people accept that, then you start doing work that's based on something that's false. Ah, Very interesting. So you're going to nip that in the bud. That's yeah. next. That's yeah. what's next. <laughs> right. Okay. So I'm doing like a more of a community tour than, um, you know, the next step is supposed to be I write uh, an academic article based on this, publish it in an academic journal. 
Right. But it's more important to me. If if that happens, that's cool. But it's more important to me to talk to community based people who are not coming from an academic standpoint. Just wanting information. That's it. Okay. Well, appreciate you coming to the <laughs> show yeah, and uh, chit chatting. And you know, when we get off camera, we're gonna really talk about you know our favorite show, Atlanta. Yes. <laughs> 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 that My show on TV. Paper boy oh, and man. My so, girl Van. And, oh, I love Van. I <laughs> love Van, man. Darius, I'm ticked off at you about that. I mean, not Darius, uh, Ern. Yeah. But. <laughs> nah, he gonna be who he gonna be. Yeah. See, look, we gonna talk about <laughs> Yeah, see, we talking about Ern. Right. <laughs> Appreciate it. The doctor herself, Dr. Tahira Mahdi, PhD <laughs> in psychology for you and me. <laughs> so we can see in the place to be. <laughs> Keep rapping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Much love to you. Much love. Love you. <laughs> love you. <laughs>